afternoon. This is wildlife biologist Eric Orff with New Hampshire Fish and Wildlife YouTube channel. This is Monday, September 9th, 2019. Well, today I'm in Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown. This happens to be Hayes Marsh. And if you look behind me, you'll see a long earthen structure. This was actually a dam built by the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department for the purpose of attracting and supporting waterfowl. I think they were built, this one was probably built in the late 50s or early 60s. Between the mid 1950s and uh, oh, about 1970, the Fishing Game Department built a number of dams. And there's another one further in here in Bear Brook. And uh, as a wildlife biologist for the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department, I happen to be, spend quite a bit of time here over my 30 year of employment at the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department. In the winter time, I would check wood duck nesting boxes to see how successful they were. I banded ducks here a couple of, uh, a few years as well. A couple different ways. I would actually uh, come here with my canoe in May when the ducks were on their nest and I would plug the hole so the duck couldn't get out and take off the side and capture the duck and uh, band it. In fact, right over there, uh, there was a particular box that I bet dated back because it was quite weathered back to the 1950s so this would be in the 1980s so it was at least probably 30 years old that that particular box when I banded the female wood duck for the next two or three years in that same box that same female wood duck was there so she would come back and lay her 10 to a dozen eggs in that particular box several years in a row and there were about uh, 10 boxes here in the marsh uh, another uh, marsh further out has another eight or ten. So Fishing Game Department actually built dams in the 50s and 60s into the early 70s and the reason being that there were not many beavers. So today I'm going to talk about beavers. The whole reason much of this country was explored and eventually settled was for the fur trade. In fact the, the beaver trade was uh, the commodity of exchange for about 200 years from the early 1600s to the 1600s. 30s or 40s until the late 1700s, beavers were the commodity of exchange. People didn't have money, so if you needed to buy an axe head, you had to you had to give somebody, to trade somebody a beaver pelt or two beaver pelts, whatever the whatever the value of the beaver were that year. And uh, so everything was traded in the basis of the value of a beaver pelt for nearly 200 years here in New Hampshire, and. Uh, in fact, by the late 1700s, beavers were pretty much extirpated. So when the settlers got here in the, in the 1740s and 50s and 60s, beavers were gone uh, from much of the southern part of the state, at least, southern and central, and uh, they were extirpated for well over 100 years. In fact, by 1800, it was thought that beavers were completely gone from New Hampshire until around 1900, so for a hundred years or more, beavers, there were no beavers in New Hampshire. They were simply gone. Uh, a colony was found on the uh, northern New Hampshire in Pittsburgh on the kind of the main side in the, I think, 1912. And uh, they were finally protected around 1910 by legislation. And that colony grew somewhat, and by the 1920s, the early conservationists, fishing game, uh, conservation officers or game wardens back then actually caught a few and moved them further in south of the state. I think somewhere around Plymouth, some were moved. Uh, in 1930, I think about 20 beaver were captured and some moved as far south as Wilton or Milford, just outside the, to the west side of Nashua and Manchester. And uh, but beavers were protected from 19, I think 1908 until uh, the mid. Uh, mid 50s and I know for a period of years there were actually a limit on how many beavers you could trap. I think that uh, was the case well into the 1960s. I know when my family moved from northern Maine to Londonderry in 1962 and in 1966 I began duck hunting. I think all the beaver ponds that I hunted were all fairly new. So beavers had just come back into much of New Hampshire in the 1960s. So yes, beavers were extirpated, gone for a long time, and finally recolonized most of the New Hampshire just 50 years ago, not long ago. So 
So here at Hayes Marsh, I think it's close to uh, probably 60 acres here that is flooded. We can see out here, we'll see that there is a beaver lodge out there. Let's see, I'll zoom in on it here. Woohoo! Come here. Where is that beaver lodge? Right out there somewhere. There it is. <laughs> there was another one further to the to the east here too over there a while ago. That one's gone, but there was one here for a number of years over there. But uh, yes, beavers are still here at Hayes Marsh and Bearbrook State Park. And uh, they have thirst, flourished. Now beaver trapping, as I mentioned, was allowed again in 19, I think, 53. Uh, with some, uh, uh, just a short season, the first few years, uh, the March 15th till April 1st, so just a two week season for many years. And then by the, the mid to late 50s, the season was extended. And, but there, was, there were limits on how many you could take. And uh, Helenette Silver's book, The History of New Hampshire Game and Fur Bearers, kind of the, the Bible on things here in New Hampshire, has some interesting numbers here. Here is based in 1940. So in 1940 is when uh, beavers were finally found basically throughout the state. And here are some estimated beaver populations in the spring of 1940. Belknap County, only 53 beaver. Carroll County, 130 beaver. Cheshire County, 22 beaver. Coss County, where beavers first seemed to come back in the early 1900s, they pegged their population in Coas County at 5,890, Grafton County 64, Hillsborough 157, Merrimack 255, Rockingham 355, Stratford only 32, and Sullivan only 27. So uh, looking at some season dates, 1940, April 5th, uh, March 15th to April 1st, uh, 1953, February 10th to March 1st. Uh, so the season was very restricted for many, many years. But by the 70s, the beavers had flourished here uh, across much of the New Hampshire. In fact, uh, in 1978, I became the fur bearer biologist for the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department. And uh, I remember 1979 when pelt prices were very high on fur in New Hampshire. A uh, fisher pelt was worth over $200. And I, as I recall, a beaver pelt fetched $6,200 in uh, 1979. And that year, uh, 1979, around 6,000 beavers were trapped in that one year. More recently, the trapper numbers, the beaver trap has, uh, has gone down significantly. Uh, 20, the 2010-11 season, I see here from the uh, New Hampshire Fishing Game Department's annual harvest report. That uh, the 2018 harvest report it shows uh, 2,347 beaver trapped in 2010, uh, 2016, 2017, 1,202, and the 2017 18 season only 1,117 beavers were trapped. So the fur value now, unfortunately, is uh, beaver may be worth 10 or 15 or 20 dollars if you're lucky. So the, the pelt value has significantly declined and so has the um, effort by the trappers to take beaver. Now another thing that happened here and over here at the at the dam for a number of years there was what's called a beaver pipe. A beaver pipe, beaver deceiver. Here is a tube. Basically it's a three-sided box that uh, you cut a notch in a beaver dam when you want the fields or forest not to be flooded and you cut a notch and you slide this 20 foot long wooden pipe that has screening on the bottom into that notch and it lowers the water level to that level whichever level you've notched the dam to or, uh, uh, or whatever structure you're trying to protect and guess what uh, I would <laughs> reason I'm here today is I read an article in the paper the other day that the, the uh, Vermont Fish and Wildlife uh, Department had uh, put out a news release where they put out something like three or four beaver pipes or beaver deceivers this summer. So it made the news. Well, guess what? The beaver deceiver, the beaver pipe, was actually invented by Henry Laramie, a wildlife biologist right here in New Hampshire in the 50s. 
you know, the fishing in department realized for a long time, and I think a lot of that was thanks to Henry Laramie, of the value of beavers and did a lot to protect and promote their growth. Why do we want beavers? Beavers create habitat for everybody else. Moose and ducks and geese and songbirds and otter and raccoons and mink. Everybody loves the wetlands that beavers create. In fact, I have read in a couple different sources that something like 80% of the animals live in New Hampshire. Part of their life cycle is within 100 yards of a wetland and who creates those wetlands but our beaver. They are a significant driver of all that we see and enjoy. If you enjoy birds at your bird feeder, those birds have likely spent part of their life foraging or living or nesting or traveling by a wetland that was created by a beaver. Beavers have brought us an abundance of wildlife. Thank you, beaver, and thank you for New Hampshire Fishing Game Department and Henry Laramie for making the value of the beaver so important to the wildlife in this state. So yes, Henry Laramie created the beaver pipe or beaver deceiver that helps you control the water levels of a marsh and so you can keep the beaver and prevent it from flooding more than you want. So yes, beavers continue to be a very important of life here in New Hampshire. And uh, if you see a beaver, tip your hat, say thank you beaver, you have done a lot for New Hampshire. And uh, with a little coaxing from the wildlife biologist, oh, and I forgot to mention, yes, the beaver pipe, I one thing I meant to mention is when Henry Laramie invented the beaver pipe, Fishing Game had a whole program for 30 years in putting out beaver pipes. We had a full-time bio-aid, uh, uh, Murray Fay, that all summer long constructed and put out beaver pipes throughout New Hampshire to save beaver right into the, into the, uh, into the 90s or 2000. I can't remember exactly when, re when he retired. I guess say around 2000. So Murray Fay spent 30 years here in New Hampshire as a biologist aide putting in beaver pipes all summer long. So yes, Fishing Game still considers beaver very important to our, our wildlife, to our communities. And uh, hey, as I say, if you get a chance to see a beaver, tip your hat. They have done a lot for New Hampshire.